Good afternoon, everyone. This is to continue the lesson of chapter 12, talking of, about marketing channel, channels of distribution. We are into the learning objective number two. Now in this learning objective, we already discussed few things because we are talking about channel behavior. Now marketing channels consist of firms that have partnered for their common goods with each member playing a specialized role. We already discussed about that. Also in the marketing channel, there are channel conflicts that can happen horizontally and vertically. Now in, in here, you will see the, the vertical, the conventional marketing channel and the vertical marketing channel system, which is the conventional or the traditional way is between producer to the consumer, their intermediaries in between, such as wholesalers and retailers. And for the vertical marketing system, they has modified the way producer interact with their intermediaries, with the wholesalers and the retailers, where they work collaboratively together for the common goods and for the goods of the consumer. Now we will see that in detail one by one. The conventional distribution system consists of one or more independent producers, wholesalers and retailers. Each separate businesses seeking to maximize its own profits. And perhaps even at the expense of profits for the system as a whole. So that is the conventional distribution channel. So they work independently, individually between the producer, the wholesalers and the retailers for their own uh, purpose of maximize their profits not for the whole system and even to maybe to sacrifice at the expense of the, the system as a whole. So that is the conventional um, system of distribution. But for the vertical marketing system or the VMS, it provide channel leadership and consists of producers, wholesalers and retailers that acting as a unified system. They work collaboratively together. Corporate marketing system. That's the first term that we will see. Also contractual marketing system and administered marketing system. The corporate vertical marketing system combine successive stages of production and distribution under single ownership. So that is the corporate, corporate vertical marketing system. They combine all the successive stages of production and distribute it under one ownership. The difference between the, the co corporate and the contractual vertical marketing system, it consists of independent firms at different level of production. So they have different uh, independent firms in a different level of production and distribution who join together through contracts because they have a contract. So they, they join together to, to involve in the marketing system, such as the wholesalers and retailers. They are contracted to the suppliers to distribute the the products, the goods, service to customers. So they are under contract. The next thing is franchise organization. Franchise is a contractual vertical marketing system in which a channel member called a franchisor links several stages in the production distribution process. For example, here is the sports clips, the haircut, the barbershop haircuts, where they are all franchise in the franchising system. And you can also name uh, other franchise such as McDonald's 
or 7-Eleven and other other franchise um, product. So in this, all the individual members of the franchise, they together with the with the franchise or they are contracted in the vertical marketing system and they work independently between one franchisee to the other but they have uh, obligation for their fran fran franchisor okay An administered vertical marketing system is a VMS that coordinates successive stages of production and distribution through the size and power of one of the parties. So inside the collaboration of the separate uh, player in the marketing system, there is one that is more powerful, one that has more power to compare with the other, with the rest of the player in the marketing system. And they are what they call it, administered vertical marketing system. And the horizontal marketing system, after we're talking about the vertical from top to bottom, now the horizontal marketing system is a channel arrangement in which two or more companies at one level join together to follow a new marketing opportunity. So there is no there is no one that is above the other. All the player, all the companies that join together are equal. That's why they are horizontally, they are the same level in the marketing system. For example, here Target Store, they, they work together with CVS Health, who operates stores within the stores now in 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 thailand uh, you can see like like 7-eleven 7-eleven is a, a grocery stores but inside 7-eleven you will see or you will find sometimes they have pharmacies or they have uh, cell phone booths uh, counters that sell cell phones if you go to maybe uh, lotus or tesco then you will see that inside the store itself there are other such as uh, pharmacies or other uh, bookstores or any other small uh, vendors that are selling drinks inside the Lotus store. So they are partner, they are companies that join together between one or two companies with the same level of, uh, of responsibility on how to achieve their marketing opportunities. Now, this is the, this is a figure of mark, the multi-marketing -mark channel of distribution, where from the producer, you can use different type of channel of distribution, or you can directly uh, link between you and your consumer. You will see that in here, this is segment one, two, one, uh, business one and business two, where you can use any channel, any intermediaries that you think that you find is best for you to, to be able to deliver the maximum value for your consumers. Now, when talking about producer and consumer, you can use retailers, you can use wholesalers, right? Or maybe uh, catalog online, such as mobile. But when you're talking about businesses, <clears throat> maybe you, you can use uh, distributors or dealers or agent because business needs more, uh, more people influence in the way the distribution system applies. It is different with the consumer because consumer is less complicated compared with the business. And sometimes business, they, they use what they call it, sales force. So people that go out to sell the product from producer to the, the company, to the businesses. For consumers, you don't need those sales force. You can use uh, maybe online catalogs or you can use paper catalog or any, any, any other ways. 
So these are the multi-channel distribution system that you can use in your strategy. Multi-channel distribution system are system in which a single firm sets up two or more marketing channels to reach one or more customer segments. So you combine, you use more than one ways of distribution system. Now, the next thing is talking about this inter intermediation. It is the cutting out of marketing channel intermediaries by producers or the displacement of traditional resellers by new intermediaries. Now, this one is a big thing nowadays because before, before the internet of the thing, before those uh, technology that are present now, people selling things, they distribute their product through intermediaries. But now, because of the internet of, 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 internet of the thing and technology, people do not have to go to the intermediaries, do not have to go to the, the retail stores or wholesale store. They can use it they can use whatever the technology that they have, such as the mobile and the, and the, the more advanced way of buying things, such as in here, the Lazada or Shopee and other online uh, website um, provider that provide any type of uh, goods that you can purchase online without going to, to the store. For example, this Toy R Us, Toy R Us, before they are very popular with their product related to toys. But they found that <clears throat> because of the technology, they are becoming the less popular to compare with other stores, such as uh, discount stores, such as Walmart or online merchants like Amazon. So Toys R Us, they start to think about this intermediation to cut out of the marketing channel intermediaries, maybe to, to, to sell things through online instead of uh, selling it through the store. So this is a, one way that you, you, you will find and it is more uh, affordable where companies need to be more innovate, innovative. They don't have to sell through physically inside the store or it's okay to have the store, but you can sell your things online where people will purchase it online. Otherwise you will lose your um, market share in the competition and you will um, run out of business. Now we're going to move into the learning objective number three. We are going to identify the major channel alternatives that's open to a company. Marketing channel design. Marketing channel designs design effective marketing channels by analyzing what are the customer's needs, setting channel objectives, identifying major channel alternatives, and evaluating those alternatives. So let's see that one by one. Analyzing your customers. What is your customer's needs? That is very important, right? We learn about this, how to analyze. What are the needs? You need to do some surveys, do some study, do your homework, what to do with your customers. What are the needs that they want? Setting channel objectives. You need to know the objectives of your channels of distribution and identifying what are the alternatives, channel alternatives. If this one doesn't work, what are the alternatives? and you need to evaluate those channel alternatives. So analyzing consumer needs, find out what target customers want from the channel. Identify market segments. You need to determine the best channels to use. If one is not working properly, look for different ways. Minimize the cost of meeting customer service requirements. So you also need to minimize you need to be able to be uh, to, to look for ways on how not to spend too much time, cost, money to accom accommodate maybe some of the, the needs of the 
the consumer, that is not necessary. Minimize the cost of meeting customer service requirements, but you still need to fulfill their, the, your customers' wants and their needs. You need to know, you need to analyze what are the needs. You need to set in channel objectives, determine the targeted levels of customer services. You need to determine what is the target of your customer service. Balance consumer needs against cost and customer's price preference. You need to be able to balance those two. What are the needs of the, the customers? And what are their preference? Because you cannot make everyone happy. You cannot, uh, yeah, you cannot make all people, all your customers happy because people are different. Some people like this one, their standard, their preference are different. So you can only do your best and to balance what is their, what are their needs and their preference. Identify major alternatives, very important. Type of intermediaries refers to channel members available to carry out channel work. Most companies, face many channel member choices. If you think you can sell your product through, let's say retailers, you can use it through retailers, or maybe it's best to use agent to sell your product, or maybe to hire a distributor company, right? So you need to be able to identify which one that fits for your objectives. What are the the, the goal that you are targeting, so you'll be able to identify your alternatives. Now, there are a number of marketing alternatives, intensive dis distribution, extensive distribution, and selective distribution. Let's see that. In identifying major alternatives, responsibilities of channel members, a producer and the intermediaries need to agree on the price, the policy of the price, the condition of the sale, the territory rights, territory rights, and some specific service, some special requirement about the service. Those are the things that the channel members has to take responsibility. They need to agree with this, all right? Evaluating major alternatives. When you are looking for the alternatives, you need to be able to evaluate whether this alternative is economic or profitable, and you are able to control some issues or adaptability to the market, where you want to make sure that you do not spend too much in looking for alternatives than your expected revenues. But it has to be economic. You need to be able to control any issues that comes around and it has to be adaptive adaptability criteria. It has to be adaptive in, in the market. Now, the next thing is, is designing international distribution channels. Now, in designing distribution marketing channel, you need to know what are the alternatives and what is the best ways for you? Because talking about international distribution channel, you need to find something that is effective and that is workable for your company's strategy and goals. Because you cannot use all. You can only use so much, so many that you will uh, produce good profit and revenues, not to waste or to have a lot of cost and uh, less revenues or profits. Okay. The objective number four, you need to be able to explain how companies select, motivate, and evaluate channel members. Selecting channel members is important, <coughs> right? You select what are the members that, channel members that you're going to use or managing channel members and motivate them. At the end, you need to evaluate the performance of the channel members. Because when you are 
uh, selecting, you need to make sure that it is according to the objectives and the goals of the company again, right? Now, talking about public policy and distribution decisions, talking about rule and regulations, exclusive distribution is when the producer gives only a limited number of dealers the exclusive rights to distribute its product in their territory. So it is exclusive, such as maybe talking about car, car dealership, car producers, let's say uh, Toyota or Honda or Mercedes-Benz, they only assign exclusive members, specific shop that has the right to distribute their product. Such as maybe like in Thailand, maybe talking about the branded uh, product, they assign or they give the exclusive right to only one or two dealers that has the exclusive rights to distribute their product because they, they want to make sure it is exclusive. Exclusive dealing is when the seller requires that the exclusive distribution sellers not handle competitors' production products. So when you are dealing exclusively, you are giving the, the command to the seller that the seller can only handle so much. Maybe they cannot handle all. Why? Because that is exclusive product. So you make the deal with the channels. Exclusive territorial agreement are where producer or seller limit their territory because you don't want to, to compete between your own uh, channels of distribution. So they are limited territory. If, you, if, if there's only already one in town, maybe if another one wants to open in a town, then to look for how far the, the first one, then the second one. So they will not uh, uh, take over their customers or uh, intercede with their uh, same, same uh, market segment. So this territory, there's a limit of place where you will open the, the distribution channel. Tying agreements are agreements where the dealer must take most or all of the line. Now in here, also the distribution, uh, the producer and the distribution channel, they can make an agreement that the dealer must take most or all of the line of the, the product that they're going to sell to the consumer. Now the last learning objectives is objective number five. You're going to discuss the nature and the importance of marketing, logistic and integrated supply chain management. This is talking about logistic and it is very important. In logistic, it is the, the, the vehicle of companies for them to distribute their product, logistic companies. Marketing logistics is a physical distribution. It is the place where the place where the product are being um, distributed for customers or business to, to purchase. Involves, it involves planning, implementing, and controlling the physical flow of goods, also services, and related information from points of origin to points of consumption to meet consumer requirement at a profit. So that is the marketing marketing logistics involve everything from the planning, implementing and controlling the physical flow of the product and service to meet the, the needs of the consumer and still make profits. For example, talking about GM, GM cars. And they found that it is very important because at, uh, at times GM, they have hundreds of millions of tons of finished vehicles and parts in transit. Imagine talking about hundreds and millions of tons of finished vehicles running up on an annual logistic bill of about 8 billion US dollars. 
So it's huge. Even small saving can be substantial. So the importance of marketing logistics, all the planning, implementation, and the control of the flow of the product from the factory all the way to the shop and to the customers. Imagine if there is only small uh, interruption, like now what's happening, their problem with the semiconductor or the chip for the production of computer and production of cars. So there's a lot of a delay in, produce, in producing computer and cars because of those problem of distribution. And in the past, um, I think last year, we ex uh, the world experienced uh, the delay of distribution because of the, the container ship that got stuck in the Suez Canal, the Ever Given, run by Evergreen uh, uh, container uh, ship, the Ever Given, got stuck in the canal, and in the, it interrupts the global distribution around the world, where there are delays for many, many weeks. Imagine it's only one big ship that gets stuck. Imagine if there are many, many marketing logistic problem, then the production will not be, be successful or will be delayed. Now you will see the supply chain management. It comes from the supplier that send the raw materials to the companies and companies produce the product. This is what they call it, the inbound logistics. So the logistics that come from the supplier to the company and company produce the, the product and they sell it. They sell it to customers through retailers, resellers or wholesalers. This is what they call it, outbound logistics. So the product that goes out from the company to the customers through the logistic companies that is outbound. Now inbound logistics is all the materials that are not completed, that comes from the supplier to the company to produce the product that will become the finished good of the product. This is uh, the supply chain management. Now, uh, there's a reverse logistic where the demand comes from consumer because customers, consumers or business customers, they're the one that required or requested the, the product. So they request through the logistic or intermediaries or distributors or wholesalers, retailers. So these chains of management will go on and on and on in circle. Supply chain management involves managing upstream and downstream value added flows of materials, finished goods, and related information among suppliers, the company, the sellers, and final consumers. I mentioned you earlier about them, the supply chain management. So it starts from upstream, from the supplier, from companies that distribute the raw materials to the company. When, is, when it is interrupted, when there's some problem, it will for sure interrupt the down, downstream of the production. And it will even has a problem in the distribution of the product and customers or consumer will be the one that suffers, right? Because of the war nowadays, the war in uh, Ukraine, you see the supply chains management, supply chains of oils and other products such as uh, the net natural uh, fossil fuel, also uh, the beans and other things, grain, wheat, are being interrupted because of the war. So all the prices are starting to increase, to go up because of the, the interruption in the channels of uh, supply chain management. And the supply chain management is a big topic that involves, and it is not simple, because it involves managing all the upstream and the downstream of the, the <clears throat> distribution channel. So it is very important to be able to manage it. Sustainable supply chains means 
to go green, to go green strategy, be able to sustainable with the green technology, with the green vehicle, no need to use the fossil fuel anymore, use electric uh, vehicle and cars and so on, or run a more greener factories, less uh, use less of, uh, of materials that will destroy the, the, the world and maybe to recycle more, okay? So those are the sustainable supply chains. Goal of marketing logistics should be to provide a targeted level of customer service at the least cost to give the best value to the customers at the least cost while you are uh, giving value to the customers. Customers in return will give values to you through uh, buying your product or referring your product to other people. So people will keep on buying your product. That is the, the cycle of the marketing logistic channels, supply chain management and the channels of distribution. Now, major logistic functions such as warehouse, Warehouse is the place where you store all your, your product that's already ready to go to, to the retail stores or to go to the market. You store it in a warehouse. Those are the major logistic functions. Now, in the next thing is talking also about the inventory system, inventory management system. What, they, what usually company using is now RFID, the radio frequency identification device where they can uh, electronically manage the inventory. So it will go into the system using the barcode, using the QR code. So you, you don't need to, to write it down manually, but once you scan it, you know where it is. It will go to the proper place with the inventory management system. And it is a big time to manage uh, the warehouse and your inventory with the radio frequency system. The next thing that's big related to the logistic is talking about the transportation. Transportation, you will see like in, in the road, there are many trucks that uh, contain a lot of uh, product materials that are being delivered from cities to cities, from Bangkok to Saraburi, from Saraburi to Korat and so on. You will see that many times on the road where this is the trucking is the one that runs the economy of the country. And it is very important. Now, the next thing is logistic information management or the electronic data inter interchange. Now, data interchange is the data that collects, that gathers all the information for, for you so that you will know, you'll be able to manage your, your inventory. The last one is talking about the integrated logistic management. It is the recognition that providing customer service and trimming distribution cost requires teamwork internally and externally, building logistic partners, partnerships, and third party logistic. So that should there should be a way of you integrate between the internal and external and third party logistic. So that when there's a communication, there's a good interaction, good uh, communication that can result in the reducing of cost, being efficient, being effective. When things are integrated, you don't have to repeat your work two times, three times, maybe only one time do the work and the information will be integrated will be distributed, will be informed to the different internal uh, uh, channel or external or third party logistics. Now, integrated logistic management, such as the Oracle, I believe some, most of you or you, all of you know about Oracle company, Oracle supply chain management software solution helps company to gain sustainable advantage and drive innovation by transforming their traditional supply chain into integrated value chains. Now, because of the technology now that's available, people can 
always use technology to integrate things between the supplier, between the, the intermediaries, third parties, logistic, trucking that give the service, your subcontractors work together internally and externally to build a good logistic partnership so that the distribution of your product will arrive to your customers with a affordable cost and in a timely manner. So it will create values for them. When they receive the values, they will in return give values to you and you will have a, a good, good uh, uh, revenues and profits from your sales. So this is the end of chapter 12. I hope you, you can uh, learn something and review again your chapter for your knowledge that will help. This is the, the third element of the four Ps or the marketing mix, which is the place, distribution channel. The first one is the product. Second one is price. This is the third one, talking about the place or distribution. Now, next time we will, in the following chapter, we will discuss about the promotion, okay? So that's the end of this presentation. I hope you will learn something. May God bless you all. Thank you.